Hi there! Today I'll be showing you guys how to go and reset your Windows 10 password should you ever find yourself in a situation where you've actually locked yourself out. This is also applicable to a situation where you might have to help someone else gain access to your machine. Maybe you're a computer technician working in a computer store somewhere. So this is applicable to a lot of situations. So you might find a user that just effectively locked themselves out and you need to gain them access to their account again. So keep in mind, this is not hacking. There has to be a way to gain access to your, your machine should you ever find yourself in a situation where you locked yourself out. So a lot of people are like, okay, I'll just take my, my machine to the local computer store or to the local technician. Yeah, but what are they gonna be doing? These guys are gonna be doing what I'm gonna be doing. So there is built-in mechanisms. They're not necessarily hacking, they are built in so that you can go and help yourself or so that the technician can come and assist you and they'll obviously charge you a small fee for this. So I would not call it hacking. I suppose it can be used for that, but this is for educational purposes to go and help yourself or so that you can go and help someone else. Hey, right. what I'm about to show you guys is not applicable to domain joint machines, although I suppose it can to a certain extent gain access to a domain joint machine. Um, this is specifically for local accounts, if you know what a local account is. And to a certain extent, it might also help with live accounts, but that's a different story. What I'm about to show you is also not the only way you can go about doing this. There's more than one way you can go about doing it. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using a Windows 10 virtual machine just to make it a little bit easier on myself because I'm using recording software. It's just going to make it a little bit clearer for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. Otherwise, it's going to be a little unclear. We don't want that. So a virtual machine is exactly like a real computer, it just doesn't have its own hardware. So if I were to go and click here on connect, you can see this is a computer running in the background, it's actually got Windows 10 installed on it. Now I actually do know what the password is, but I'm going to pretend to not know what the password is. So I'm just going to type in some random letters and numbers there. And if I press there, I don't know what the password is. Okay, so that's the situation you're going to be finding yourself in, or a situation that your user is going to be finding themselves in, if you have a client or a user in your environment. So if I make this full screen, you can see there's not anything we can really use at this point in time. Now, yes, there is third party software out there that you can go ahead and use to go and bypass or reset this. I do not advise that you go and use those. Some of them do work. Yes, don't get me wrong. Some of them do actually work, but a lot of them have some sort of spyware or malware in them and it's bad for you. So why would someone be giving away software like that away for free? Most of the time you'll find that those softwares are for free why are they for free? That's the first question you should be asking yourself. That should be a red flag. So do not download softwares that's gonna go and promise you that we can go and download this tool and you can go reset this password or break into that environment. First of all, that immediately shows that you're up to no good. And secondly, that is gonna go and harm your machine. They're probably gonna steal some information from you or you're just gonna harm your machine in some sort of way. So what I'm about to show you does not require any downloading of any sort. So if I go and click on this little tool here, for example, that's the tool we're going to be using to get access to this machine. That's just utilities. Now, if I click on that, it's supposed to just open a little narrator here and all kinds of things. Mine's a little bit delayed at the moment, but that's all it's going to effectively do. It doesn't actually do anything when I click on that. So that's the tool we want to go and rearrange now. So I'm going to gain access to Windows to a certain extent here by pretending to do a recovery. And by pretending to do a recovery, I'm going to, to a certain extent, have access to the system files and I'm basically just going to go and rearrange the files so that when I click on this little button, it's going to go and open administrator command prompt. Command prompt being CMD for those of you that know what that is. So having access to command prompt, that'll allow me to go and change the password to this account. Now, once you've gone and rearranged things like that, yes, you're going to have access and yes, you're going to be able to log in. But I strongly advise you to go and change things back. And you need to do it the same way you've done it in the first place. It's not a matter of now once you've logged in, you can go and do it via that method. No, you need to restart again and do it the same way you changed it in the first place. That's the way you're going to go and change the files back. So first of all, how are we going to gain access to this machine? We're going to pretend to do recovery of sorts. So you can go and force a recovery on your machine via one way. You know, you can go and turn off the machine by holding in the power button. I'm not talking about clicking here. And clicking on shutdown or restart. No, we want to force the machine to think something is wrong so we can force it to go into some sort of recovery. Now, how you can force your Windows to think something is wrong to, is to normally do at least two, um, you know, incorrect power shutdowns. You know, it's not a nice way to go and shut it down. So just hold the power button in on your laptop or your desktop computer, force it to shut down and start it back up. 
As soon as you start back up, force it to shut down again. So you need to do that at least twice. Sometimes I've seen three times, but normally two times does the trick. Once you've done that, you'll be able to take it, you'll take it to a recovery page. If that doesn't work, another way to go and do is just go and use a Windows disk. I actually advise this method. Go get yourself a Windows DVD or make a Windows DVD. You can also use an ISO image if you're using virtual machines. Or put Windows on a flash drive. Remember, it has to be bootable. Now, if you want to know how to make a flash drive bootable, please drop me a comment and I'll show you how to go and do that. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go here to Media. And you'll notice I've already got a Windows 10 DVD in here. That's an ICE image, which is the digital version. You can use a flash drive as well or a physical disk. You can see there's physical disks. Okay, so I'm going to go and reset this computer, which is basically restart. Restart it. And I'm going to press a key. It says press any key. I'm going to press any key. I want to force it to go into recovery. So I'm going to pretend to install Windows. And then I'm going to go recover tools and pretend to recover it. And actually, that's not anything that I'm going to be doing. It's not at all what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to go click on next chair. Okay, so if I were to go and click on install here, that's actually going to go through the little wizard which is going to go and install Windows or at the very least try and upgrade Windows. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to go here to repair your computer. And here you can go and click control shoot. Now continue is just going to go and boot back into the password screen where we could not get in the first place. We don't want to turn it off. So we want to troubleshoot. That's the only option that's left here. All right, so we don't want to reset, we want to go to advanced options. And there we will find system restore, command prompt, system image recovery, startup repair, and a whole bunch of other goodies. So believe it or not, you can actually do what I'm about to do as well from command prompt here. That's another way you can go. That's not the method I'm about to show you guys, but you can also do it to a certain extent from there. If that's an administrator command prompt, it's not exactly the same steps, but there's a lot of similarities. You can also go use the net user command. Now, if you type in net user into command prompt, it'll show you all the local accounts and you can go and reset the password via that method. Now, the, the, the reason I'm not showing you that because that's not what the video is about. And secondly, because I've seen if you go and do it that way, it does not always show you the local account whose password you want to go and change. That does not stop you from gaining access, though. You can always go and change the main administrator account password and gain access to the system that way. Once you've gained access, you can go and just reset the password to your administrator account. Or alternatively, hell, you can just go and inject an account, make an account via that command prompt and just promote it to your administrator, log in with that account. And once you've logged in with that account, you can effectively go and reset your account's password. So that, that's lots of ways you can go about doing it. I'm going to go to here to system each recovery because I want to rearrange my command prompt and utilities effectively. That's the one I want to target. There is only the one operating system on this machine. You can see at the moment it's looking for an image. It wants to recover via an image. That's not what we're going to be doing. I'm just going to click cancel. Next. And then you want to go here to where it says advanced. Pretend to install a driver. We don't really want to install a driver. We just want to gain access to the system files. That's actually all we're looking for. If I click on OK, voila. Now we've got access to the system files. You see, now I'm in without a password. So I'm going to go here to this PC and I'm not currently booting from the operating system that's installed on this computer. Normally, if it was installed, if you're booting from that operating system, you'll be booting from drive C for the most part, at least. Now, drive C is not drive C as you would know it now. You would notice as soon as you go into your computer, your drive letters has been rearranged effectively. So you need to go and check a little bit which one was the operating system. So in my case, this one here, drive D, is the one that was C. So just go and double check which one has actually got Windows on it. That's actually all I'm saying here. Gonna go to Windows, we're looking for System32 folder. System32. System32 folder is the one that's got the command prompt, which is called cmd.exe, and it's got the util man file that we wanna actually go and edit. So I'm gonna go all the way down until I find the letter U for util man. We're looking for util man here. Uh, let's see if we can find this tool called util man. There we go, util mana. So you can see I've already rearranged mine. So this thing is normally called util man. Let me just show you. Util man, like that. That's what it's normally called. So if you want to go and rename it, don't go and right click on it. Normally I know if you right click on a file, you can go and click on rename. Don't go and do that. That's going to crash this little wizard. You're going to have to start over. Just go and click left click on it or double click on it. That's going to allow you to go and change the name effectively. So that's the default name. It's going to have util man there is the default name. And you're going to temporarily change it to something else. You can call it whatever you want. So I'm going to call it Utilman with an extra A at the back, like it was now. That's just because I want to 
go, go to CMD and I want to rename CMD to Util Man temporarily. So that when I click on a little button at the bottom right, which I fiddled on initially, as soon as I click on the little button, it's going to open CMD and it's going to think it's Util Man. It's not really Util Man, it's actually Command Prompt, but it does not know that. So as soon as you're done and you've gained access to this machine, please go and change it back. Go and change your Util Man back to CMD. And then you go to this one, which you've called whatever, and you go change it back to Util Man. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Now, as soon as I change this file to a different name, you'll notice it doesn't actually look like it changed anything. You need to actually go and say refresh. But the problem with that is it's going to jump back to the top, I've seen. So you can see Util Man is no longer called Util Man. It's called Util Man now. In my case, refresh, jumps back to the top, which is a little bit annoying. Now I'm going to go ahead and look for CMD. Let's see if I can find this little bugger called CMD. Here we go. There's CMD. So I'm going to go and make that Util Man now. So I'm going to left click on it once. I'm going to call it Util Man. So now when I click on a little button at the bottom, it's going to open this thing called CMD. It's going to think that is Utility Manager. Meanwhile, that's actually CMD. So we're just tricking it a little bit. I'm going to go to just click on a random file. You see, it still says CMD, but actually it did change the name. So I need to go and refresh for it to actually take effect here. Boom, it's gone. Okay, so that should do the trick. You can't see it, but it actually did do the trick. It did rename it. I'm going to go to Cancel here. Cancel, cancel, cancel. And that's it, we're done. Now I'm going to go to continue to Windows 10. Just continue booting. We're going to land back onto that password screen, which we cannot gain access to. Give it a moment to get to the password screen, first of all. So this method that I'm showing you is not limited to just Windows 10. It actually works on Windows 8.1, and it works on Windows 8, and I think it even works on Windows 7. If we're talking about older operating systems like Vista or Vista, some people know it, or XP, uh, there's probably even more ways. I remember on XP, there used to be so many ways to gain access to it. Uh, if you'd like to know how to go and do this on a different operating system, or if you'd like to know how to gain access once you've lost pa the, the password to your live account or to the domain account, please drop me a comment below and let me know. If you'd like to see a video about something else entirely IT-wise, also drop me a comment below. And if you feel this video has helped you, uh, please help me and give me a like and subscribe. Okay, so now I still don't know what the password is here, but if I click on this little utility manager at the bottom, notice what happens now. If I click on utility manager at the bottom, it actually opens command prompt. It thinks it's opening utility manager, but it's actually opening command prompt. So now what you're gonna go and type in here is you're gonna go and type in net space user, it's two words, net space user, enter. This is going to give you a list of all the local accounts on this computer, not the domain accounts, not the live account. So if you're logging into a Windows Live account or an Office 365 account, they will not be listed here. These accounts are local accounts, if you know what a local account is. If you'd like to know what that is, drop me a comment and I'll reply on your comment and explain what a local account is as best as I can. Uh, I think the comment box is a limit as to how many characters you can type. I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to go and double check it. Otherwise, I'll just make a damn video about it. Hell, why not? It's locked down in most countries and I'm quite frankly bored, which is one of the main reasons I'm making these videos. So now, the account I want to change the deposit for, as you can see here, is called Burning Ice Tech. That's the channel's name, by the way. So there's Burning Ice Tech. I'm going to go and change it. So I'm going to type net space user space. And now you type the account's name that you wish to change the deposit to. So I'm going to type in Burning Ice Tech space. And you price a little star sign, which is asterisk sign, I think, for some people. You can see it's a little star sign there. So it's net space user space the account's name that you used to change the password for. It has to be an account that's listed here. Space and then the little asterisk sign. If you press enter, it's going to allow you to change the password without even knowing what the original one was. Now if I go type a new password there, it's not going to look like I'm typing something. It just looks like it stays blank. That's because of security reasons. So if you're typing something, trust me, it actually is typing something. So for instance, now I'm going to go make deposit 123. I just typed 123 on my keyboard, even though you cannot see it there. But I made deposit 123. Now I'm simply going to go press enter. It's going to ask me to confirm. I'm going to make deposit 123 again. 123. I just typed 123 on my keyboard. And now once I press enter, you can see it's going to say completed successfully. So it doesn't show the password because if someone is speaking somehow, they will not be able to see what you have typed. So you can go and make this whatever you want. Just bear in mind it actually is typing something there, which is probably one of the reasons it's asking you to con asking you to confirm it because you cannot see if you typed it correctly yourself, mind you. There we go. Now I can go ahead and close the little command prompt window. I don't even have to reboot. 
and I'm going to type in one, two, three. You can see I made deposit one, two, three. And it's most likely going to go in now. So now I've gained access, but I still need to go and fix my command prompt. So I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. You literally just go and do what I just did now. So you're going to go restart again from the boot disk or the flash drive. Go and rename that util man back to cmd.exe. And then go to the one that you called something else. I think I called mine util man now. Nah. Go and call that back to, or rename it back to util man. Otherwise, some of your things are not going to work. I'm not too concerned about the util man itself, but you need to have the command prompt back where it was. You know, label it back to cmd. Because almost everyone at some stage needs cmd for something. So if you don't have that back in its place, you're probably going to encounter some sort of problem somewhere along the line. Um, if you run into any problems, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know so I can help you. I can't help you if I don't know. But yeah, that's effectively how you go about resetting your Windows 10 password or Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 password if you effectively locked yourself out. It's not the only way. Drop me a comment below if you'd like to know other ways how to go about doing this. If you feel this video has helped you, please give me a like and subscribe. I'll be uploading videos quite regularly on how to do things like this. And lastly, please don't tell my wife because she doesn't like it when I make videos like this. Okay, so over and out, guys.